Okay. Yeah, so the collective consciousness right now, um, we've, we're, and also there's the planetary alignment. So Mercury has gone into retrograde and some of you guys or my students know that when Mercury goes into retrograde, it's three weeks of confusion, computers breaking, phones breaking, people, um, contracts and things like that, and legal documents, anything to do with communication goes a little bit. So it's about being aware of that and um, sometimes when planets are in retrograde um it's very much there's a lot of planets in retrograde just now as well so this is what's been happening mars is in retrograde and mars is is a little bit crazy and angry um, um but no it gives itself a bad name mars actually get, gets things done so there's with there's no such thing as good or bad black or white we're going to be this is a tantric half of practice and this is very much there's a balance so there's something good in everything that has so mars gets a bad name mercury gets a bad name so at the end of the day what's happening retrograde means going back so we're going back to certain things and it's this, there's a, there's the, they're called the COVID planet. So they're, um, and it's to do with Capricorn. So it's going back to what happened in March for us. Um, it's replaying a little bit. What did we not look at? What do we not deal with? What things do we need to actually let go of now or relearn? So this re retrograde, it's redoing things. So it's lessons. So instead of going, oh my God, this is this is all happening, it it's about slowing down, looking at things, so then we can move forward and get them done. Um, but when you're feeling a little bit chaotic, there's a fear of the unknown. There's things going on, and people around you are hurting. It's it's quite difficult to look at things from a um, you know that sort of perspective when there's a lot of emotion involved so this is where tonight we're going to do a soothing practice it's going to involve strength stability calm stiram sukham that's the um the um the sanskrit for for strength stability calm this is what we want to bring into our practice but that's not just in our physical body we want to bring this into our minds as well so we're going to work with some forward bending practices today we're staying in postures a little bit longer for some of you guys who are used to sometimes me doing the kundalini flow and really trying to work through the pranic we're we're working with um counting the breaths working with the breath and staying in in the postures now when you start to your mind starts to go oh my god i want to come out of this posture that's some of your karmic stuff coming up so when your your mind starts going mm -hmm, you can you've got that choice to choose to react to the situation or to adapt and to allow things to be and then that's when you come into your higher mind so the more you can find comfort in your discomfort in your practice it allows you to find comfort in your discomfort off the mat too. So this burning when you're in a prep, when you're in a pose and you're going, oh my God, why can why is why is she not moving? That's your mind going, oh my God, that's you, 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 you. we're gonna do work with these pr practices because it's about I, I wrote some stuff down. I was brainstorming for you earlier today. Um, where did I put it? so that i could share some stuff with you so i really wanted to really give you something um so we're working with um a, one of the values so this is the energies this a downward facing descending energy that's this in the pelvic bowl so this is about um so forward bending this is also about helping us with elimination which not just is about constipation and stuff like that it's about letting go um, physically, mentally, emotion emotionally. This is about acceptance, letting go, forgiveness. Um, this practice is going to help with sleep, digestion. Uh, it's going to help us be more grounded. Um, so it's about not conceptualizing um, experiences by going, oh my God, you're getting stuck in your head. It's about really experiencing it. So it's about allowing us to become, so the more we put this into practice on our mat, the more we become more stable within ourselves as people, more dependable, and we feel more free. And I think this is the, this is the word of the day. We need 
a little bit of freedom. We need to create space and because we're just, everything's coming in on us and we've got this fear of the unknown. So that's what I'm bringing you today, hopefully. Okay. <laughs> Right, so I'm going to stop speaking and we're going to begin standing up for a change, okay? So we're starting off standing up into Dasana. And all we're going to do to start off with to really connect in with your breath, keep your shoulders back and down, tuck the tailbone in slightly, tuck the chin in slightly into Janandar. The more you can keep a nice length in the back of your neck, the more it helps to calm down the mind. So you're inhaling, taking your arms up to the count of four, and then exhaling, bring your hands back down to the count of four. So just smoothly and slowly breathing into the count of four, arms up, and exhaling, bringing your arms back down. So keep working with this. You can close your eyes if you like, and you're really just connecting in with your breath. Be aware if your breath is a little bit jaggedy. It's a sign that your mind might be a little bit jaggedy just now. So remember yoga is chitta vritta narodaha. And yoga is the stilling of the fluctuation of the mind stuff. So the more we can smooth out our breath, the more we can smooth out our mind. So come back into Tadasana, relaxing your shoulders, checking in with yourself. And then you're placing your hands just at, the, just at the top of your um, hamstrings, underneath your bottoms here. And as you exhale, you're folding forwards and bringing your hands down the legs. You're inhaling, coming halfway up, hands up, lengthen through the spine, and then exhaling to fold forward, staying there for one breath, breathing into the count of four, breathing out to the count of four, and then inhaling, coming all the way back up. Okay, and again, exhaling, coming down. Inhaling, coming halfway up, lengthen through the spine. And exhaling to fold forward and you're staying here for, for two breaths now. Inhaling, coming all the way back up. And again, exhaling, folding forwards. Inhaling, coming halfway up, lengthen through the spine. Exhale, fold forwards. Instead of going into three counts, three breaths, we're going to go into four breaths here. We're going to skip number three. I don't know why. <laughs> Just because it's good to be naughty sometimes. We're not getting enough chance to be naughty. So count, so four breaths down here. We're staying here for some time. So you're maybe into breath three now. And then inhaling, coming all the way back up. So staying standing here and really checking in with that downward energy. You're really trying to create some energy that's descending, coming down from the pelvic area to, tonight. So you're really getting a sense of groundedness. Okay. So then from here, we're going to take a step to the, um, to the side to balance out this, these forward bends. And we're going to work with some a little bit of twisting here. So you're taking your arms out. I'll go this way so you can see me. You're taking your arms out. Your feet are quite wide apart. And we're, you're working to the count of breathing in for four, out for four, for just now. Okay? So breathing in for four. And then as you breathe out for four, you're going to take your left hand to the outside edge of this right foot and the right hand's going up to the sky. Inhaling, coming all the way back up. And then exhaling to the other side, to the count of four. And inhaling, 
coming back up. Let's do that one more time, neither side. Okay, so this next time you're gonna breathe out for the count of eight and come up to the count of four, okay? Here we go, breathe in for the count of four. Breathe out the count of eight. Breathe in the count of four. Now if eight is too long for you, do six. I don't want any purple faces or panicky faces, okay? So if you can go to the length of eight, that's perfect. But if six is where you're at, that's okay. It doesn't make you a bad yogi. So lengthening out the exhale is actually really gonna help us calm down. I'm coming all the way back up. So let's repeat that one more time. So breathing out to the count of eight or six, depending on where you are today. And if you're stressed, you can, be, you can breathe slightly more shallowly. Okay, so we're going to exhale and come to the, the right foot and you're going to stay there. So you're really just staying there. So you don't have to worry about your shape. Or, so you're not, if you want to look up to your right foot, that's fine. But if your neck is sore, if, it, if it's too much strain in your neck, you, play, you look where it feels comfortable for you as long as you're breathing. You can bend your knees slightly here as well. And you're starting to feel that tapas, that burn. So if your mind starts wandering, it starts speaking to you, you're gonna accept it, be where you're at, come into that higher mind. Inhaling, coming all the way back up. Take your hands down by your sides and just check in yourself. See where you're at. Do you feel that energy starting to move through your body now? Okay, take your arms up. And as you exhale, you're coming down to the other side and we're gonna stay here. So shoulders are relaxed. When you reach that stage that where you're going, oh my goodness, I can't go any worse, you can go further. This is your lower mind, manas mind. You want to, you want to reach body mind, our higher mind. And this is where you can you get to the stage where you feel you can be in this pose forever. Really connect to your breath. And then breathing in, coming all the way back up, take your hands down by your sides. And again, check in yourself. Feel that difference. Just gonna balance out your body after doing some symmetrical. We're gonna do um, Prasarita Padmottanasana, a nice forward bend now. So you're inhaling, take your arms up and exhaling, folding forwards, hands in the ground. And we're really trying to allow the spine to lengthen here. Bend your knees if you need to. It's about the spinal extension here, keeping the neck nice and long. You can even breathe into your belly here. Okay, so from here, you're gonna breathe into the count of four, out for the count of six, hold for two. So breathe in for four, out for six, hold for two. That space in the hold is where you really find that freedom. 
when you can connect to who you really, really are. So work with this breath. When you're ready, place your hands onto your hips. Inhaling, coming halfway up, staying there, and then exhaling. When you're in an inhale, come all the way up. Okay. Woo. My mind went a bit woo after doing all that forward bending and breath holds. So from here, coming back to standing into dasana, listening to your body, again, listening to where you're at. So you're really feeling. There's energy moving. It's very much starting to, um, it's, it's, coming, it's coming down. You can feel that connection of your feet to the earth now. Okay, so you're gonna to go to the other side of your mat. So coming into another wide legged position, point your, your foot to the front, one foot to the front of the mat, bend your knee. So it doesn't matter, so yeah, so have your front foot bending to the front because we're going to do both sides anyway here. And take, coming into warrior two, I'm going to go this way. <laughs> so you're going to curl your fingers around your thumb, draw back your bow and arrow, your left elbow, look along that front arm, really ground the front big toe, the outside edge of the back foot, and really feel this connection. So you can engage Mula Bandha, pelvic floor muscles now as well. This is really working with Mula Dara Chakra, the root chakra, grounding, safety, security, stability. It's really what we're needing in our lives right now. Inhaling to come back up. Turn your feet the other way and let's go the other side. So bend that other knee, coming into Virabhadrasana two, curling your fingers around your thumbs, drawing back your right elbow, looking along that front arm, really connecting to the earth, connecting to your breath. Inhaling to release, and you're moving to the middle, and we're moving into goddess pose. Okay, so tucking the tailbone in slightly, shoulders are back and down, breathing into your heart center. We're going to work with a powerful breathing technique. Again, it's releasing stuff as well. So you're taking your arms out, breathing in, take your arms out, breathe out. You're pulling your elbows in, and we're going to go. Okay, <laughs> so breathe, breathe in. That's how we're all feeling right now, isn't it? So coming up to the front of your mats again into Tadasana. Breathing into your heart center, feeling the connection of your feet to the earth, smoothing out your breath, feeling the prana moving through your body. Then from here, taking your left foot back. So you're going to have your hips square, moving into Buddha Bhadrasana one, warrior one. So you're heel to heel. And you're going to inhale, take your arms up and bend that front knee, and then exhale, bring your hands down and straighten that leg. So inhale, arms up, and exhale, come down. We'll just do this a couple of times.
Okay, the next time you're in warrior one, you're gonna take your, uh, bend your elbows and then take your hands as if you're holding some tea lights. So you're open to receive. And we're staying here. I'm breathing. Building this tapas. I'm not speaking about um, the lovely Spanish food. I'm speaking about your burning, your spiritual ardor. It's about your passion for life. It's about really just burning to get things done. It's you're about your desires, your passion, who you really are, your vibrancy. Inhaling to come back up and move into the front of the mat and just listening to your body. Okay, you're going to step back your right foot and let's work with the other side. So hips are square, you're pressing down the outside edge of your back foot, front big toe. Inhale, arms up, bend the knees. Exhale, take your arms down and straighten the legs. Keep going. Okay, the next time you bend your knee, you're gonna stay there. Then take hold of your T lines, breathing into your heart center. Breathe into the vibrancy of who you are. Your, your mind is clear and your body is vibrant. Step into the front of your mats, into Tadasana, again, finding where you are on the mat, in your body, in your life, breathe acceptance into where you are and be aware of what the, the, pra, the, the apana vibe, this energy moving through your body, connecting you to the earth. Again, you're taking a step back with your right foot now. No, sorry, your left foot. Ooh. And keeping your, your, um, keeping your hips square. So you're taking your right, the back of your um, right hand is onto your kidney and you're inhaling, taking that arm up. Okay, and then from here, you're exhaling to fold forwards, keeping your left bicep next to the ear. So you're trying to keep the extension, inhaling to come all the way up. So moving up and down, keeping the arm near the ear, keeping the extension in the spine as you're breathing in and out. Okay, the next time you exhale, you're gonna come down, take that left hand to the inside of the foot, and you're gonna lift that right arm up to the sky. So you can if you want. So this is a variation of Paravrita Trikanasana. This is, this is giving you a bit more space. We're trying to create space here. So you can look up to your right fingertips or look down. Look what feels comfortable for you, but remember to breathe. Try and have your shoulders stacked, one above the other. And this is where the tapas comes in, this burning. So when your mind starts swearing at you, <laughs> so you say, yes, hello, acknowledge your thoughts, acknowledge what's going on and keep breathing. You can do this. You've got this.
slowly squaring your hips, bringing both hands to either side of that foot and inhale, come halfway up, lengthen through the spine and exhale, you're folding forward. It's gonna stay here just for, just for a few breaths. And then place your arms up by your ears. And as you inhale, come all the way up. Exhale, hands by your side and coming into Tadasana again. Checking in with yourself. Where are you now? Find your breath. From here, you're stepping back. Your right foot now, heel to heel. Hips are square. Take your left hand into the back of the left kidney. Inhale, right arms up. And again, we're moving up and down a few times, just getting your body happy and aware of itself here. Find some stability. And try and keep that bicep near your ear. Keep the extension in the spine. Keep lifting up with that thumb as you come up. And as you exhale, the next time you exhale, take the right hand down to the inside of that left foot and the left arms coming up. So it's, this is a modification. We're creating space giving ourselves where we need to be, taking us to where we need to be, but we're also creating this fire, like a phoenix coming out of the fire. We can't move forward, we can't learn, it. we can't evolve without experiences that burn us. So become part of this flame. And then looking to the front of the mat, hands either side of that foot, squaring your hips. Inhale, come halfway up, lengthen through the spine, and then exhale, folding forwards, finding your breath. Inhaling, coming all the way up. And then stepping forwards again into Sudasana. Doing lots of standing stuff. So you, you can tell we're working with groundedness tonight. Really finding that connection to the earth. Inhale, take your arms up. Exhale to fold into Uttanasana. Inhale, come halfway up, lengthen through the spine, and then you're exhaling, coming into downward facing dog. And just staying there, check with yourself, move in any way that feels right for you. If you want to sway your hips, sway your hips. If you want to bend your knees, you want to, you want to really just move your body, move your body. If you want to stay really still, be really still. Exhale, come down onto your knees, into tabletop. Inhale to look up. And then exhale, curve your spine round, down into child's pose. Inhaling, coming back up. Exhale, curving round, back down into child's. So you're moving in a really slow and smooth way with your breath. Curving your spine round and exhale into Balasana Child's Pose. And as you inhale, you're kind of 
swooping forwards. Going to do one more. And then when you come back into child's pose, you're going to stay there. So just staying there, resting in your breath, resting in yourself. And where your forehead is touching the ground, Ajna or Agnya Chakra, this is also stimulating the vagus nerve. So the vagus nerve actually calms you down. This is connected to your, me your mental health, basically. It's, it actually stimulates the ocular cardiac nerve. So any pressure, you, you know, sometimes you see little babies or children banging their heads on their cots. That's them trying to self-soothe. That's the, um, so, and so people that you put eye bags, I've started to put, since I've, since I've been really reading about the vagus nerve and calmness and mental health, um, I've started to use an eye bag for my um, shavasana now. So you're stimulating the vagus nerve just by being where you're at right now. Okay, so slowly coming back up and we're moving down onto our bellies. So this is a back bending practice. So not back bending, we're, this is a forward bending practice. So we're not incorporating too many back bends. If you're gonna incorporate, you always need a back bend in your life, I feel. Um, and if you're doing forward bends, the belly back bends are the best. And they also stimulate the vagus nerve. They're also good for your mental health. So place your hands underneath your shoulders, pat your forehead on the ground, relax your shoulders. So we're going to come in and out of baby cobra. So inhale, coming up into baby cobra. So halfway up, exhale, come back down. Keep going, inhaling up, baby cobra. So there's, it's as if there's no pressure, your hands are really touching the ground, okay? So really working with that movement. So we're working the back muscles here. So the next time you inhale, you're staying here. And a way of checking that you are working with baby cobra, you're not pushing down and you're, you're working with the, your, um, your tummy, your back muscles, sorry. Take your hands a couple of inches off the ground here. Yeah, that's the ones you're supposed to be using. Draw the shoulders away from your ears. And then slowly stack your hands in front of you, rest your forehead down. And then from here, we're going to work with, with a, um, a, a movement that um, Krishnamacharya um, has, like, has used to help bring balance into your body. So any kind of spinal difficulties or any mental, mental issues with regards balance. So this is what we're needing in our life as well. So you're going to take your, so you take your left hand to the back of the, um, the left kidney here. And you're looking to the left. And as you inhale, you're coming up and you're going to swoop that right hand to the back of the right um, kidney and the left arm's out and look to the right. So you're inhaling and exhale. We're just working with our upper body here. So working with the breath and looking each way to smooth it out. So it's another variation. And we're not working as hard as if you would be if you were using the legs too. This is, we hold a lot of tension in our necks and our shoulders when we're stressed or when we're tense. So this again is helping. So every time you move around, remember to draw that shoulder away from the ear. Slow and steady. And then from here, stack the hands in front of you, rest your forehead down, stimulate that, the vagus nerve here. 
Neck back into your breath. And then curl your toes under. Hands underneath your shoulders, you're gonna push up into plank pose. If plank pose isn't your thing, stay in your knees, come down to your knees. This has given us a little bit of personal power, working with Manapura Chakra in your solar plexus. Coming down onto your knees and taking your arms back behind, resting down into child's pose. Place your hands on either side of your head and you're gently pushing yourself up into Malasana, squatting position. Place your hands into Anjali Mudra. And place your left hand on the ground and inhale, right arms coming up to the sky. Open up the chest. Exhale, hand down. Inhale, left arm up. Open up the chest. So keep working with this movement slowly, smoothly. And then from here, taking your feet together. So we're not, this isn't Vadakanasana, um, cobbler's pose. This is Talasana. So your, your heels are a little bit further away from your, your bottom here. You've got a little bit of space here. Okay, so you're gonna inhale to lengthen through the spine. And inhale to the count of four. You're gonna exhale to the count of six. Inhaling to the count of four. And you're gonna to exhale to the count of seven. Inhaling for four. And this time you're exhaling to the count of eight. Make sure you're the back of your neck is long to keep your mind calm. So tuck the chin in slightly. We're staying down here now. So trying to keep the length in your spine. So tucking the chin in, you're not allowing your head to flop. By keeping the length in your neck, it allows the mind to stay clear and calm. But it's almost like you've got to have some sort of compromise with the chest as well. So by keeping the the back of the neck long, we still need to have our chest open. So have a little, you know, a little comfort with your body and give it what it needs. Inhaling to come all the way and then coming into cross-legged position. Place your palms up to receive and stay here, listening to your body. Again, seeing where you're at. Take your right hand to the, to behind you and inhale, take your left arm up and exhale to twist to look over your right shoulder. So, your left arm's the outside edge of that right thigh. As you inhale, you're gonna lengthen. As you exhale, you're gonna twist. Keep your jaw and your shoulders relaxed. Then inhale, take your left arm up, exhale, bring both palms facing upwards to receive. Listen to your body, see where you're at. Place your left hand behind you, inhale, right arms up, 
exhale, take it down to the outside edge of your left thigh. Inhale to lengthen and exhale to twist. Look over that left shoulder. Gently releasing, coming back to center, listening to your body. Take your legs out in front of you. We're going to move into Paschimottanasana. So we're going to do it dynamically. So you're going to try and make sure your arms are up, to, up beside your ears as you move up and down, trying to keep extension on your legs, on your, on your spine, sorry. So every exhale, you're going to try and do the length of eight, but if that gives you a panicky feeling, do it to the count of six. So you're inhaling to come up for four, exhaling for eight or six, dependent on where you are. There's no blame, no shame on yourself or others. We're in a really safe space. Be nice to yourself. So breathing in for four, exhale to what feels right for you. Okay, so the next time you come down, you're going to stay there. Or you're going to come down, you're going to inhale to come halfway up, just to really bring some more extension into your spine. And then you're going to go down and stay there. So you can either place your hands over your feet, or your hands can be in the shins if that's where you're at. You can bend your knees if you need, or take hold of your big toes and take your elbows out. Just make sure you're, you're trying to extend through the spine. Your feet are flexed towards you. Your jaw, your shoulders are relaxed and you're connecting to your breath. Inhaling to come all the way back up and sitting back into Dandasana, shoulders back and down, flex the feet towards you, hands down by your side. Breathing into your heart. From here, you're gonna move onto your backs. Draw your knees into your belly, give yourself a sweet hug. Then place your hands to the inside of your feet into happy baby pose. Drawing these legs down, just trying to bring awareness to the lower part of your back. This is going to stop any sorts of spasming. We've done a lot of forward bending. So people assume that back bends are what gives people a lot of spasming in Shavasana. But if you've been doing a lot of forward bending too, you can get that. So just neutralizing the spine. And then from here, slowly coming into your well-deserved Shavasana relaxation. So get nice and comfortable preparing you for Shavasana. So I've prepared one. Here's one I prepared earlier, sound like Delia Smith. So that's me showing my age there. Some people won't even know who Delia Smith is now. Um, so 
this is, we're going to do a uh, Shavasana. And this is a Shavasana based on, it's called being with what, with not knowing. And I think it was so relevant to right now. Um, this is actually one that's for perimenopausal women and the in inevitability of change. But I think the being with not knowing is where we're all at right now. I'm, I'm pure menopause now, um, but you know, it doesn't matter where you are in your life cycle. We are all in this place. So let's just sink down into your mat. So I'm going to work with the golden breath to really connect in. So breathe in through your nose and breathe out through your mouth as if you're blowing a golden thread. So really bring some calm into your body. Really just smooth it out. Working with this golden breath. Then you're going to let go of that breath and sink down into your mat. I want you to imagine that you're literally lying in the center of a dark red soft place. Okay. See your body resting. And see yourself resting there in this dark red soft place. It is fragrant because you are the tiny seed in the middle of a huge cosmic rose. It is huge and its scent is heavenly and its petals are protecting you as if you're lying in the center of a circular palace whose walls are made from the living petals of the rose. The touch of the petals on your skin is soft like silk. Gently, as if blown away by a warm breeze, each petal of the rose separates from the stem and floats away in the breeze and disappears. Watch as slowly one petal after another does this. And it takes a long time before you realize what is happening because the rose is so luscious and with so many petals that the outer ones have long since gone before you become aware that they're falling away. See yourself like a tiny seed child woman resting with open eyes in the center of this womb rose chamber and become aware as the outer petals fall away that eventually they will all be gone until the red rose room will disappear. The quality of feeling is perfectly serene utterly beautiful and faintly curious. Watch the petals blow away and begin now to marvel at the beauty of each one. Give each one your full focus of attention as they detach from the central stem and float away. Soon there are only a few remaining and now the real beauty of the vision intensifies. Become aware that a gorgeous golden light is bathing you. Before it has been shining through the red petaled walls, but now it is direct and strong. It shines in you as you rest in the center of the rose room that is now an open platform, totally bathed in this powerful light. As the last petal blows away, realize that you have magically become entirely naked and lying in open view in the golden light. 
It illuminates you and as it does so, it awakens within you a radiant light that shines from within your heart. Rest in the illumined nature of yourself. Clearly your own self and radiant at the center of the rose, like the seed that remains to carry the essence of the flower itself when the rose is finished blooming. Let yourself receive the kindness of your gaze. Feel that you have become the seed in the heart of the flower, seeding vision and wisdom to grow the next generation. Have a sense of real connection to this powerful image, tender and very potent. So carry these blessings and the wisdom of the vision of yourself at the center of the rose out into daily life where it continues to nourish and reassure your spirit, your vibrant, beautiful human. You're going to begin to start to wiggle your fingers and your toes. Stretch your arms over your head, away from your body. Stretch your feet away from your body. Pull your knees in, give yourself a wee hug and roll from side to side. Rolling on to your right side into recovery position and just staying there. Then keeping your eyes closed, you're slowly and gently pushing yourselves up to seated position. Working and moving into a tantric meditation. So you're gonna bring awareness to your thoughts, in your head. And as you inhale, you're going to gather all the thoughts, all the things that's making you feel a little bit crazy right now. And, and as you exhale, draw it down, Shoshona, down your spine into the base of your spine. You're inhaling again, and you're going to bring all the thoughts, any negativity, make it into one little small space. And as you exhale, set it free right down into the core of the earth and let mother earth accept your stuff so again inhale bring all that awareness all your thoughts your worries negativities bring it all together gather it up and as you exhale bring it down the spine down to the base of your spine inhale again Concentrate it all into one little tiny little space. And then as you exhale, it, release it down into the earth. So keep working with this breathing technique, allowing yourself to give your worries, give your negativity, give your fears, give anything you need to let go of down into the earth, the earth will transmute it. It's a little bit like compost, so you don't have to worry, you're not making the earth rotten. It's gonna be transmuted back into powerful energy. And then from here, bring your awareness back to the base of your spine. And imagine an upside down blue triangle. Visualize an upside down blue triangle at the base of your spine. And as you exhale, you're gonna visualize blue lightning, bringing all that energy any negativity, bring all into the earth's core. 
So you're really, as you exhale, there's all this blue lightning coming from your blue triangle. We've created all this energy, apana vayu in our pelvic bowl. We now, we're now releasing what we need to let go of. So work with this blue lightning coming from this blue triangle. It's very, very powerful. And then when you're ready, rest in that space. Keeping your eyes closed. And you can bring your awareness up to your eyebrow center where your inner teacher resides. Feeling pulse of energy with the breath moving from your midbrain to your third eye. Sense of self. Connecting in to your wisdom, your intuition, your sense of self. And then allowing yourself to be, rest in this space. Slowly bring your awareness back into where you're seated on the floor, listening to sounds around you, coming back to your breath, sensations in your skin. Slowly begin to open your eyes and place your hands in Anjali Mudra. So we're going to end tonight's session with an OM. Here we go. Oh. Namaste. Thank you for practicing yoga with me tonight. And um, 